I want to encourage some leaders right now that vulnerability can be a superpower for you in a season when you're walking through difficulty. Um, fathers, man, don't, don't hide your pain. Don't, don't hide when you feel weak. Be honest with your wife. Yep. You know, uh, CEOs, it may not be the whole company, but you need some trusted advisors that you can right. be honest with when you're walking through. Lead pastors, there's, there's just this, this whole idea that leadership is lonely and I'm just gonna isolate and just kind of get through things on my own. I think it's just the worst lie of, the, of, totally of this agree. generation is taking out a lot of leaders, but find space because here's what I want, want you to understand. Welcome back to the Love Leadership Podcast. I'm Pastor Mike O'Connell, joined by Pastor Todd so, Doxson. And today uh, we get the privilege of talking about a blueprint for courageous leadership. Come on. Come on now. We know that, um, hey, uh, leadership is not for the faint of heart, <laughs> right? You know, uh, I think uh, it's funny because in, in today's landscape and today's culture, I think uh, starting stuff, uh, you know, being being the entrepreneur, uh, being the content creator, all these different things are, are sort of sort of sexy, and then you get in them, and you're like, oh, <laughs> it requires real work, yeah. and there's real struggles yeah. and real battles that we face. And today, mm -hmm. um, we know that that you know battles are an equal opportunity offender. We sure. all go through them, we all walk through difficult yeah. seasons. But how can we gain the right perspective? And today, we're going to really uh, we're going to look at a, a section of scripture, I think, to mm -hmm. sort of set this idea up. That's such a beautiful picture of where we're going to land when we come up against these uh, difficult seasons. Maybe you can mm -hmm. uh, set the scene for for our guest today. I like what you said, whether you're an entrepreneur, a mom, a dad, you know, business leader, wherever you're leading at, we're all going to run into different challenges, pressures, circumstances mm -hmm. that will really it'll challenge us to our core. And it's going to require faith to continue to move forward, to believe the best, and to trust him, even in the diciest of times. And so today, number 13, one of our favorite passages, you know, Moses is the leader in this case. And he asked these guys to go, you know, spy out, scout out this new land that is uh, the promised land. God had called them to it. And so, again, he sends these 12 out. They're going to look at the fruit, the soil, what kind of town is it, their walls around it, and they were to bring this report back. And what's interesting that I really want us to dial into is all 12 of these spies, these scouts, they go into the land, they see the same thing, but 10 of them bring this report back like, dude, there's no way. And really, the simple answer is we can't. Mm -hmm. We saw this fruit. We saw this amazing thing, but there are giants in the land, and we just can't move forward. But two, Joshua and Caleb, they're like, well, they saw the same thing. There's fortified walls. There's giants in the land. They saw, though, the potential, the fruit. I mean, one of one of this, this like cluster of grace was so big, you're talking about fruit. They had to like carry it on a pole between two dudes on their way back Crazy. to show them a sample of what is possible in this new land, they saw the same thing, but their report was, and specifically Caleb, he says, we can. If God's called us to it, we can. No matter what uh, challenges lie in the way, we can. So super powerful area of scripture. It is, and I think it really sets up this idea. I love the, the picture that you're setting up here. There's really, there's two camps. There's two responses. Yep. Same, same, same. They're looking at the same thing. Same deal but two different responses. And there's actually some words that you give to this. Can you, can you just paint that picture yeah. for our listeners? Well, right away, I, I look at the 10 and I, it's weird. I haven't even, I don't even know what this term means. It's cowardice. I don't even know how to spell it, but that's the word right away that came to my mind was, you know, they see this, they know God's called them to it, but they're backing away in cowardice. We can't. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's like this, the crowd and cowardice. It's, it's easy, I think, at times to just back down from the challenge, back down from the giants and just kind of like, no, we can't, let's, let's, let's move away and stay in stagnant, stay in fear, cowarding. And, um, but the other one is courageous. And Caleb, he brought courage to the, the proposition. He's like, we see the same thing. Yes. And I, and I, I think it's honestly, man, with all of us as humans, 
I think we both have both responses mm -hmm. at times. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, it's there's no shame, no blame, I think, for all of us in leadership positions and as humans. Um, we're weak, we're flesh, you know, we, we back down at fear at times. I don't think it's anything to be shameful about, but it is something to be aware of and to go, what is my response in this season? And specifically as leaders, if I'm the dad of a family, I'm a mom, I'm, you know, um, I'm a business leader, I'm an organizational leader, you name it. It's there's, there's a lot of responsibility to what our response is, right? It's cowardice, it's courage, it's the crowd, it's Caleb. Like, where are we at in this response? And to be honest with ourselves, and if there needs to be an adjustment, mm -hmm. let's humble ourselves, make the adjustment, and continue to move forward. Yeah, I often tell people, because it is true, I mean, uh, we were hardwired to feel fear, to mm -hmm. feel some of these things. And I always say this, that don't be condemned if you feel fear, just don't submit to it. Yeah, that's good. And so yeah, I think really good. I think it's a matter of saying no, like, hey, I'm acknowledging that this is how I'm feeling, but I'm going to move forward by faith and what mm -hmm. God says over my life. And I think there's a there's there's a reason why this is so crucial because it's interesting that these you know two come back with a different report uh the 10 come back so two come back with the like report of faith mm -hmm. like we're going to take god at his word if he said it we're going mm -hmm. like missional mindset yep. uh they're locked in they're they're godfident and uh then the other crew they're they're stuck in fear worry negativity there's no way that we could overcome these giants and what I find interesting is then that bad report is what spread. Yeah. Which I find this so interesting because we know this fear sells. Yeah. <laughs> just just flip on your news station. Come so on. True. Do you ever just watch the so news? Come true. on, listeners, right now. Can we just be honest? Do you ever just mm -hmm. flip on the news station? You're like, when are they going to share a story like with some good news? Right. Well, good news doesn't sell like fear does. And it's interesting because one of my good friends says this. He says uh, that negativity is like Velcro positivity is like Teflon. Mm. In other words, negativity is what sticks in our minds. And you see how the negativity spreads in this particular scenario. Do you have any thoughts around <laughs> just even yeah. just how like, this is why as leaders, we need to be aware of what we're carrying because people catch what we carry. Right away. I think of, I go back to the locker room again as an athlete. And I think of um, having cancer in the locker room. Yeah. And it's weird because you get a couple dudes. So if you have a 53 man roster and you get two dudes that are poo pooing the coach's ideas or whatever, it's weird how quickly that cancer spreads through that whole locker room. I remember one of my favorite coaches, Eddie Kyatt, way back, and this is in the arena league. And I remember him saying he's, he's, he had a meeting with us before training camp started. He looked at all of us and he said, listen, guys, this is for whatever reason, I've been called to be the head coach here. This is our offense and defensive game plan. This is who we are as we go into this season. If you have problems with it or you're not syncing up with it, just please be honest enough to tell me, and I have a lot of relationships in this league, I can help you get to a team that would be a better fit for you. But in the meantime, if you're on this team, we're all in this together. We have the same attitude going in. Yeah, it's going to be a tough season. Yeah, there's going to be ups and downs, but we got each other's back. Let's go. And I just started thinking like that is the power of, of looking at this and going, hey, we're going to walk together by faith through this journey. Yes, there's going to be giants. Yes, there's going to be, you know, setbacks, but we got each other's back. And that's the power of this positivity. Because again, you get a couple negative dudes in the locker room and all of a sudden, to your point, it's wildfire. It spreads like cancer. Now you're looking at the decay on your team or your organization, your family. Now all this negativity is going everywhere. And, and uh, we talk about this a lot. What we have as leaders mm -hmm. is going to then spread throughout the rest of the team. That's mm -hmm. just how it is. Don't you think it's interesting? I, as you're talking, I'm thinking about sometimes it's interesting in a team environment. You know, you and I grew up in athletics. That's mm -hmm. kind of our context for team. But, you know, to your, to your point, if you're in a family, you're on a team. Yep. If you're working for a company, you're on a team. That's right. If you're leading a church, guess what? You're on a team. That's right. So there's uh, uh, there's multiple different team environments. And mm -hmm. sometimes what I found is um, the, the environments that get a little toxic can sometimes be a result of misguided competition. What do mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of 
instead of competing against the enemy that's trying to attack, oh, now good. all of a sudden we're competing against one another. And there's another section of scripture that you and I have been studying a lot lately from Exodus chapter 17, when Moses is, you know, leading and he's standing on top mm. of a mountain and, you know, they're fighting the Amalekites and man, whenever his arms are raised to, to heaven, they're taking ground. But yeah. as soon as they come down, the Amalekites start coming back. Well, <laughs> yeah. what's interesting is he's not up on the mountain by himself. He's with Aaron and her. Yeah. And what's interesting is you were just sharing this this morning at our pastor's breakfast that there came a point where it was like they would his hands would be up and they would come down and he was getting tired. They'd go back <laughs> up and then they would get down. And then there's a point where it says he was so weak, he couldn't lift them any longer. Yep. yep. And it's interesting because these are the moments where when, when I'm talking about misguided competition, mm. what do you do? Mm. What kind of culture do you have when when your teammates are weak or when they're struggling? Mm. Is that when you're like trying to step on their throat, stab them in the back, wow, so expose good. their weakness? So good. Are those the times that you step up and you're like, you know what, man, my brother's weak right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him lean on me a little bit so that we can continue to to move forward. And it's interesting how. Even that mentality, like mm. that's why I think culture is is deeply connected to this topic today. Like the courage of the organization, the ability of for the organization to continue to move forward, kind of falls back on what what sort of culture have we developed? Really? What sort of values do we have as a team? And I think that you know it's interesting because um, you know we talked about this blueprint for courage. Because really, the question I think that all of us should be asking right now, and maybe I'll just even just let you be vulnerable a little bit. Cause I think w what we need our listeners to ask right now, if they're, if we're really going to receive something from this particular episode yeah. is we talked about the giants in the land, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's like a metaphor or a picture of our own lives right now. Mm -hmm. And I think a question for every listener right now is like, what giants are you facing right mm -hmm. now? What giants is your business coming against? What giants is your family coming against? What giants uh, is your church coming against? Are those external giants? Are those external uh, problems? Are those internal right. giants, right? Yeah. And maybe you can just speak to like this season for you. Like yeah. what, 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 where are you needing courage in your own leadership? Really good. I mean, you know, I just shared recently, you know, I watched my father-in-law pass away, you know, and, and uh, you know, Man. trying to be there for my mother-in-law you know, making phone calls and arrangements, uh, be there for my wife, obviously never seen her cry like that ever in my life. Wow. You know, so there's deep emotional, um, you know, giants that you're walking through. You know, the church is growing. Uh, praise God for that. And everybody wants a growing church. But, you know, when you're the lead pastor and you have a, mi a million people to take care of and different processes and, you know, there's a lot that goes on with that, where you feel like you're failing someone, you're mm -hmm. letting someone down. Um, you gotta remember my my strengths, belief and harmony. <laughs> so when there's disharmony at all, uh, you feel horrible because yeah. you you didn't get into start a church because you wanted to be some big thing. You, you want you got into it because you were called and you feel like, man, I really want to help people. So when you feel like you're not helping everybody that God sent your way, and that 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 happens sometimes in in growth, right? So those are things you're, you're launching another campus here in the fall. There's all kinds of different challenges when it comes to personnel, finances, all that, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, perspectives, pe what people think. Mm -hmm. um, and in a perfect world, you're able to be, take your heart and your conversations with God and, cl and clear up everything <laughs> in five minutes with everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is it gets more and more complicated to communicate. So there, those are just a few of the external and internal giants that I'm walking through right now. And, but back to your point, one of the things that I love about our pastoral team, our leadership, our staff, our key volunteers, the people that really know our heart and know the heart of the house and believe in it and know our called, there's something about an Aaron and her perspective. You know, if, if mm -hmm. I'm, if I put myself in the text as Moses and, it's actually pr pretty perfect because what did Moses say? Like, are you sure you called me to this? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't really talk real good or, you know, I'm weak right now, you know, and he he's so, he's so fighting. The Amalekites actually is a type of the flesh. So he's on a mountain as the point person, trusting in God, looking to him. As long as his arms are up to God, 
right? He's so weak, though. He sits down on a rock. But think about the Aaron and the her. And that's what I, I share with our team. I feel so supported by the Aaron and the hers. Mike, you've been, you know, lifting up my arms for many years, right? It's like people around me that I trust, right? That, that we're walking into this. We're not blind. We understand there's giants in the land. But when you have Aaron and hers lifting up your arms and you're still vulnerable and you're like, hey, I'm walking through challenge, but I know if God's called us, he's going to provide. I don't know how, but miraculously in really cool ways. And I think a lot of times those are the seasons where he's bringing you to a, a, a deeper level of faith, a deeper level of trust. And, and it's like, I don't know how you're going to do it, God, but if you call this, you're going to do it. And so there is a courage like Caleb that wells up in you, even in those, those tough moments. For sure. And I, and I love your vulnerability. I think it's beautiful. And mm -hmm. because, you know, sometimes we can be sharing uh, this content, we can be sharing some thoughts around these ideas. And on the other side of this, you might be thinking, well, these guys have it figured out. Let me just tell <laughs> you, we're having to, we're having to apply what we're talking about in real time. That's right. And I think even just right there, and I just, I want to encourage some leaders right now that vulnerability can be a superpower for you in a season when you're walking through difficulty. Um, fathers, man, don't, don't hide your pain. Don't, don't hide when you feel weak. Be honest with your wife. Yep. You know, uh, CEOs, it may not be the whole company, but you need some trusted advisors that you can right. be honest with when you're walking through. Lead pastors, there's, there's just this, this whole idea that leadership is lonely and I'm just going to isolate and just kind of get through things on my own. I think it's just the worst lie of the of, totally of this agree. generation is taking out a lot of leaders, but find space because here's what I want want you to understand. People admire your strengths, but they connect with your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And so when you're vulnerable, what it does is it actually allows your team and the people around you to support you, to lift you up, and they actually feel more connected to you so that you can continue to keep moving forward That's together right. with courage. The second thing well that, I, that I want to encourage you with, because you alluded to this, is what can happen when we're in these difficult seasons is it can feel like, and if you're not watching this um, on YouTube right now, the picture is that that pressure and that difficulty can sometimes just feel like it's right in front of your face, that it's like, think of like a heavy blanket over the top of you. And it's like all you see, it's all you feel. And sometimes the picture that I get is it's a, it's a bit foggy to look forward. This is, this is where if you're, if you're listening today, you've got to tap into why you're doing what you're doing. Like, why is it important for you to take that step? Um, I was reminded of this, just even talking to my mom last night, PT, I, she was reminding me of, a. Uh, of a time when I was 17 years old, remember I had the near death experience yep. playing football. And she was sharing with me last night. She said, do you remember when you first got up and we took our first lap hmm. around the floor? Do you remember the question you asked me? And I said, no, like remind me. And she said, you looked at me and you said, like, what is God trying to teach me? Wow. And she Jeez, said, she looked at me at 17 man. years old and she said, you know what, Michael, I, I'm not, I don't think I have the answer to that. Hmm. But maybe it's not something he's trying to teach you. Maybe it's something that he's trying to teach somebody else. Hmm. Or maybe there's something that God wants you to get from this that you're going to teach others uh, wow. in the future. Wow. So I want to give you that perspective right now because what can happen is when we experience hmm. fear, it becomes all about us. We, we go internal. Hmm. We, we kind of get into our own emotion. But I want to encourage somebody today, hmm. tap into the why. That step of faith, man, who mm. needs it? Who's on the other side of that? Who are you serving? Who are you helping? Who are you going to give permission to because you went first? So mm. I want to just encourage um, our listeners with that today before we get into just uh, three keys here that I want to cover uh, real quickly. Key number one for the blueprint for courageous leadership is unwavering faith and conviction. Mm. And we see that uh, you, you already alluded to this. Caleb was the perfect example of this. But I want to ask you this. How, how has faith played a role in your leadership journey? And how do you maintain unwavering conviction in challenging times? For me, I think of like when we were going into the building, the story of you looking at the cup. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, you're right. I mean, 
try building a building right in the middle of COVID, you know, and, and wondering how on earth are we going to get this done and talk about giants in the land and what, what am I, are we going to back down? Are we going to move forward? And yeah. And I, I'll never forget. I, well, I preached a message. We were at Miller North, I think. And I went to the building and they, it was in construction. I'm on my knees just praying. Cause I, that was one of those days where I'm like, I don't know how we're going to do this Lord. And I just got to get on my knees and depend on you again, because this is your church. If you've led us this way, you have a way. I just don't see it. And so I remember getting down on my knees and I looked over to the right and there was this, this, this cup from like a gas station or something. And it said, dream it and do it. Come and, on. And I was just like, okay, Lord, you're, you're with me. And it was just this affirmation, like continue on, man, this dream that, that I put in your heart. This is my church. This is my dream for my people that I'm going to reach through you guys as a team. Keep on, keep on going. And it was just this wink from heaven, like, okay, you know, but the, the power of prayer, the power of, you mentioned this, right? Recently, the power of when we're under pressure, prayer, perspective, moving forward by faith, not cowering by, by fear, moving forward by faith and courage to say, God, you've called us to it. Let's go. You got it. It's so good because when you think about unwavering faith and then that word conviction, conviction means to be convinced. Yeah. So for you, I think it's moments like that where you're, whether you're in prayer or God's giving you a wink, that you, the the conviction is established to keep moving forward yep. because God is convincing you that he's mm -hmm. with you, that he's going before you. And yep. so uh, key number one, a wavering, unwavering faith and conviction. Key number two a positive and resilient mindset. And I think this is interesting because we talked about it just a second ago about how negativities like Velcro, positivities like Teflon. I want you to just share with our listeners like one of the disciplines that we do every single week. Like what's the first thing we do in most meetings and specifically mm -hmm. with our staff? We come in every Monday yep. and the first thing that we're going to do is what? Good news. Good news, That's baby. It. Yeah. Celebrating. We're going to celebrate. Yeah. And I think it's key because here's the interesting, if you just go back two chapters and numbers, I think it's numbers 11, the whole entire uh, congregation begins complaining. First, it was they were, uh, they were thirsty. They had no water. Then they, were, uh, they, they didn't have anything to eat. And they're, you know, it's man, God sends manna. So to me, it's do I celebrate? Do I, do I complain? Mm. And that, it's such, it sounds so simple, Mike. But the, the consistency to celebrate what God has done, believing that he will continue to do, I think there's a correlation between the two. If all of a sudden I just get into complaining and negativity, to your point, that begins spreading throughout not just the culture of what I'm leading, but in my own soul, in my own mind. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just looking at all the negatives that are happening. And again, it's not, um, not you got to be honest with yourself. I mean, for sure. Hey, it's this not... is a negative. This is a giant. This is a challenge. Yeah. I'm not saying like just live eliminate in denial that. Yeah, and, that's yeah. that's a perfect yeah. example. Yeah. It's not not living in denial. But you're battling that, right? By faith with with celebrating. What what has God done? What he continues to do? And that positivity be, it eats up that negativity and it ends up evaporating. It's so interesting how the diff in the it's in the difficult seasons where I feel like you know, the enemy, the enemy of our soul would love for us to, mm -hmm. to choose complaining. Yep. He would love for us to choose like laying down praise and thanksgiving and walking in that, that, uh, celebrating totally. spirit. I think, you know, it's funny because pastor Craig Rochelle has challenged us with this thought, you know, he'll say, be the chief encouragement officer. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not about just cultivating an environment of celebration, but also, I think one of the disciplines that you've committed to is like, if you think it, say it. Yep. So maybe just talk about your personal discipline um, on how you're, you are sending voice texts or quick video text to encourage people yep. to maybe see themselves a little bit more the way God sees them so mm -hmm. that they can get into alignment with what he has. Well, it happens often. I mean, I think it's, it's out of that every day in the word of God, in, you know, in prayer, and just as you go out along your day, a lot of times you'll, you'll think of some, God will just put someone on your heart mm -hmm. right away. And I, it was Craig. I think Craig said, if you think it, say it. And just, you know, making sure <laughs> I try to 
stop your car if you're in your car, yeah, right? right. <laughs> Take the quick video out and but 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 be quick to do it because as leaders, as busy people, you know, you get to the next place and you forgot what God already put in your heart to go encourage someone. So I think that's crucial is and and authentic. It's yeah. not I'm just making it up. It's a system I have to encourage people. No. It is it is nothing wrong with a system, but making sure that it's authentic coming from your heart. God's putting it on your heart and then just simply encouraging. I'll give you one quick example. It's my my stepdad's birthday was today and as of this recording and um he was obviously heavy on my heart this morning. So first thing taking, you know, time to be able to have an audio text to just articulate my my genuine gratitude from my heart that God sent him into my life at just the right time. His model of consistency, generosity, um, hard work was huge for my life, right? Mm -hmm. How many of us have parents that have set that model for us? How, how key? So just something simple, but yeah, just encouraging people as, as, much as, as much as we can. So this is how we cultivate courage in others. And that, that really was our key number three, which is to lead by example and encourage others. But yeah. I think I would love for you to speak into this because you you constantly, number one, I think you do this do this like incredibly well. You model this so well for our team. And you you also challenge our team in this. There's an interesting tension that we walk in and we've, we've sort of alluded to it a couple of times here on mm -hmm. how you don't want to live in denial. Yep. You don't want to stuff and just act like you're okay. Like, it's important for us as leaders to make sure we're taking care of our heart. Yep. We're taking care of our spirit. We're doing that work. But we also have to recognize that there's a there's a time where it's like, hey, it's it's time to like show up. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's like there's a there's a bigger war here going on <laughs> and we it's time to step up and lead. And so can you just speak into like how how in the midst of of trial? Cause I think right now you're having to you're in one of these seasons. Yeah, totally. There's a lot going on personally that could cause you to just be like you know what well i'm just gonna go into a hole for a while but you're <laughs> making the choice to yeah. continue to show up can you speak into that well even mike just it sounds dumb but you know just walking through this season with my with my wife and my mother-in-law you know losing my father-in-law i mean how how dicey that was but then yesterday at our team workout blowing out a calf you know and then as the day progressed, I got sicker and sicker. I'm, I'm sick right now. But so even that, it's like, okay, what's the choice? It's, it's giants in the land. Am I going to show up with my best effort, my best attitude? And even I'm honest with you guys. Hey, mm -hmm. man, I'm, I'm working through a tough season. So I think that's, that's it. It's being vulnerable enough to share your heart with trusted people around you. But then also you, you don't just stay stuck right? And not take the promised land. No, that's let's move it. forward. Yep. And I think that's that's what I'm choosing to do. It's a choice. At the end of the day, it's a choice. And all I've ever asked of our team, your best effort, your best attitude, right? I'm not asking you to put on a front to be fake, but I am asking all of us show up with our best attitude, best effort every time. I think God blesses that. He honors that. Mm. And so, yeah, that's it. Tricky tension and a lot more to it, but that's the cliff notes of that. Where you're doing it so well. <laughs> Keep stepping. You know, you we're, we're, we're talking about something that happens in Numbers chapter 13. What's interesting is, just so you know, uh, the negative report spread, yeah. and it caused them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Damn. Yeah. So let that sink in for a second. Mm. 40 years. 40 years. And I can't help, but I keep thinking, fast forward to Joshua. You know, Moses passes, Joshua becomes the leader mm -hmm. of God's people. And finally, God's like, all right, it's, it's been 40 years. We're going to actually go take this land. And he says, be strong and very courageous. Mm -hmm. And I find it so interesting that there's this really, uh, there's this powerful moment in Joshua chapter three where, um, he, you know, God gives him the, this instruction. He says, all right, guys, you're going to take the Ark of the Covenant and you're going to go to the edge of the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it's funny because scholars say that it was the springtime. So all the winter runoff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, was coming down the river. So the river was, was extremely high. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, probably a little like, uh, like a little bit of a raging river. <laughs> so you're kind of like, uh, should we step in mm -hmm. that thing? Like what's going to happen? And it's interesting because they take a step mm -hmm. and when they take a step, God, God parts the Jordan river. And I, I really wanted to finish with just this, picture for somebody because 
Here, here's what I want to encourage you with. You may not feel it. You may be afraid. You may be uncertain. But here's what I want to tell you. Just take the step hmm. because when you take the step that you can, now you're allowing God to do what only he can. Hmm. They couldn't part the river. They couldn't stop the river. But God could. But he asked them to step. And he's asking you to step. And I don't know what that looks like. Um, for our listeners on the other side, but there's somebody right there, mm -hmm. PT, and I would love for you to just speak to them and just encourage them yeah. as we as we close. Yeah, maybe I just pray. Lord, thank you for these great opportunities that we do have in front of us right now. Many of us that are listening right now, taking that that step of faith, whatever that looks like. Maybe it's a step of faith to call someone to apologize. Maybe it's a step of faith to uh, begin a jumping into a relationship where you can be vulnerable with someone you trust, um, opening up to a spouse, whatever that might look like, we just pray, God, the next step. Maybe it is the step towards a new campus, a, a, a new location. Whatever it is that you're inviting us into, we pray, God, that you would confirm it. You would just uh, make it super clear to us, and we would just simply obey. Not knowing how everything's going to work out, we'd take that next step, You'd part the waters, lead us into the promised land, and that you give us the power to, to work through the giants in the land by your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for <laughs> tuning in today. Uh, we're just incredibly grateful to be on the journey with you. And we do. We just would encourage you and invite you uh, to maybe share this episode with somebody that finds themselves uh, in a difficult season. Maybe it's a difficult time in their family, their business, their church. Um, man, we, we just believe that this episode can encourage them. And uh, we want to remind you of this. The discomfort isn't meant to destroy you. It's meant to develop you. Keep leaning in. And uh, we can't wait to be with you next month.